Well, Mar, <laughs> well, Mar, <laughs> and I haven't had any drink yet. <laughs> well, well, welcome to Martini time. <laughs> Let's see what the monkey will bring up. Now, I've been uh, talking the uh, last few days, I've been um, following the thread of Ken Burns. Um, Vietnam documentary. I think there's another one on tonight. And uh, we've been talking about the wound that cannot heal. And I'm connecting dots like a monkey. I jump around picking up different dots. And uh, the wound that cannot heal is a uh, very powerful symbol. It really begins with the wound in the side of Christ, the lance wound. It moves into the uh, um, Arthurian romances with the wound of the knight, the lance and the fisher king, who can only be healed by the grail and the, uh, and the grail knight who has a pure heart. So a pure heart can heal the wound that won't heal. And so we're all concerned with this wound when you go to a therapist. It's because you got a wound that won't heal. Uh, when you get a divorce, it's because you have a wound that won't heal. Uh, Vietnam created a wound that won't heal. The Civil War created a wound uh, in America. <clears throat> We're still trying to, uh, and these cultural wounds just recreate themselves in different dressings, but it's like the reenactment of the same pain. Eckhart Tolle talks about this as the pain body. Uh, the pain body is um, uh, undigested is, is pain buried in the basement and uh, comes up like a koi fish to feed when conditions are right and the next thing you know you're getting in a fight with somebody when it was over something very insignificant. So a, a good clue that the wound is being activated that's bleeding is when you have a reaction to something that's very small but the reaction is big. What are you so angry about? You know, and there are plenty of people in prison who just went to the gas station to get some gas, and the next thing you know, they hit somebody with a fire extinguisher and killed them. There, and I just went to get some gas. You know, so this this wound uh, creates uh, anger and uh, pain and conflict. And we look around after it and we say, what was that? We look at Vietnam and say, what was that? <laughs> you see? After a war is over, we say, what was that? What caused all that? World War I, what caused millions and millions of men being killed? You know, what, what's the pain here? So when you're in it, you see, you can't see it. So we've been look, connecting dots to see what this uh, wound is. And, and to me, if we can't bring it down to my everyday life, it's not much worth much. So, so the, the, we all have this wound. Um, maybe a father's disapproval. Uh, we blame it on something. But that's not the way you heal it. That's how you continue it, blaming it. He did it. Obama did it. Trump did it. So blaming the wound just continues the wound. So I have a story today, <clears throat> a friend of mine. Now, now the practice of <clears throat> mindfulness, meditation and mindfulness, is creating the conditions for the healing of the wound that won't heal. See, it's, the wound that won't heal is kind of a paradox in the sense that uh, you can heal it, but it won't heal. In other words, you can't make it heal. You, know, you can't try to heal it. But there is a way to heal it, but you can't try so what is the way? So anyway, this was the, I called this talk here, the uh, toll booth revelation. So I have a friend of mine who was uh, uh, practicing mindfulness and meditation for some time now. And it's beginning to bear fruit. But he's dealing with a pain body uh, that makes him want to control control everything and get very angry 
get very angry if anybody uh, questions his, his uh, control. Like, and so anyway, he was at a toll booth and um, threw some money in. It was, and uh, it was a bunch of extra change. And it came up uh, 10 cents short. So he was leaning over in the car, trying to get that, find that dime. You know, you have change in there, and he's going through the. And somebody was honking at the back, beep, 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 beep. And he sees the anger come up. It just, he said, "I just saw this anger rise up, but I saw it. I wasn't the anger. I saw the anger." And then I got curious, I got curious, what is this anger? And I looked at the guy behind me, and he was like going. And then I looked up, and the light was green. The toll booth had been slow registering the change. And so while he was rummaging around for the dime, the light went green. The bar went up, go, go, go. <laughs> so he just had a... He just saw his uh, uh, total shift, and he's right there, a total healing of the pain body. Because for a moment there, instead of becoming the anger and reacting, giving him the finger or something, he was curious. He was curious. He, what is this? Wow, look at that. What is this reaction? I want to see what it is. And he saw that there was a green light instead of a red light. But it was just a way for him to see uh, how life can dramatically change when you... It's kind of like the domino effect, okay? Now, I know in Vietnam, the, the, uh, so far, you know, we're up to uh, 1963 in Kennedy. And from Truman and Eisenhower and Kennedy, all of them, this was in the Cold War, and all of them used the domino effect to justify the war in Vietnam. Well, if Vietnam falls to the communists, well then Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Burma, and then even India and beyond, the Middle East, will all fall to communism. So the line stops here, the domino effect. Well, this domino effect is very interesting because I think it's something like with children. Well, if I let him do that, what's next? Uh, boom, boom, boom. So the line stops here. In politics, well, if the liberals get that, give them an inch, you'll take a mile. Women, if you let women take an inch, they'll take a mile. Everybody, if you let them take one domino, they're going to take them all. Stop it right here. Boop. You see? <laughs> and so what my friend experienced was the flipping of the domino effect. Because if he had identified with the anger and, re and, and, and uh, become the anger and identified with it, he would have been uh, getting on the roller coaster of his karma. He would have been getting on the roller coaster of his conditioning. And that would have been another, a domino effect. And you know this in your life, you know. If you react to a situation from your pain, your loss of control, your loss of sense of justice, your feeling of being a victim, all of that, you see, react to that. And you do an action that hurts another person or yourself, it creates a domino. And boom, 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 other actions follow from that. So a very simple uh, identification with our conditioning, our pain, creates a domino effect of many, we, and you keep living these out. Everything creates something else. So when it's flipped, when you see, instead of instead of uh, reacting, when you respond, see, he responded to the situation with interest, with awareness, with mindfulness. Instead of reacting, that son of a gun, he's bad, God, go back and smack him. <laughs> you see? 
And so the situation that his karma, his conditioning assumed was not the situation at all. And so when you, when you have a revelation like that, when you have a tool, toll booth revelation, which really is a metaphor now, so a toll booth revelation is any moment when your conditioning reacts to a situation and you say, wait, what's happening here? Isn't this, let me look at this. What's the emotion here? What's the feeling? What's going on? What's the truth here? When you respond that way, that creates a domino effect in the opposite direction. Now that creates joy because the energy that you did, you see this, these reactions are energy. And when you invest in that control, when you invest in control, you are, in, you are investing in the energy of control, which is conflict with the world. So you are investing and you are putting your bank account in that control. And guess what? You're exhausted. You're worn out. You're stressed. And you have guilt. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh. You see, in shame. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so that investment, you see, in the reaction creates a domino effect in your life. And that domino effect, most people live in it their whole life. You see. So if you want to reverse the domino effect, because when you don't invest, when you don't give yourself over to the reaction, that energy that is contained in the pain body that causes the reaction is liberated. And when it's liberated, guess what? It becomes free energy. And free energy is joyous. Freedom is joyous. That's why we all love freedom. Freedom is fun. Freedom is joy. The feeling, the experience of freedom is joy. I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> all the energy I was wasting in reaction is now free energy. I can create something. I can change my life. You see, it's free. That's what free energy means. Do what you want with it. Go write a book. <laughs> Buy a house, paint a house. You know, free energy is free energy. But reactive energy, the energy of conditioning, is all tied up. All your energy is tied up in your conditioned reaction to life. There's no extra energy. You got no energy for nothing except to maintain the matrix, except to maintain the conditioning except to maintain the pain body. Maintenance of pain, that's about what we do. We, we, main, we, and the toll booth is death. And that's what Buddha said, old age, sickness, and death. That's the price we pay for living, in a, living the conditioned life. And the only way out of the conditioned life is to say, wait, what's the toll here? What's the price? Let me look. Wow, I just reacted to this situation. Let me look at that. Let me be curious, not about who did it, but about my own feeling, my own emotion. Isn't that interesting? So when you turn and look at it, you see, you're not identifying with it. You're not putting on its clothes and raising a sword and going out to kill somebody. So when we identify with it, when we don't look at it, we become that. And we are uh, like a puppet, like a mannequin, like a character in a play who is going out to uh, kill the insult, you see, who's to retake control. So Vietnam was a great example of a nation obsessed with control and a nation who believed it had to win at all cost. Regardless of the facts, regardless of the truth, it had to react, you see. It had to turn and cuss that guy out <laughs> who was beeping his horn, uh, you, know. you know. So anyway, I, I connect the bot, dots and oh, the last dot I've been connecting 
And uh, this, uh, I've kind of like fell in love with the uh, metaphor of uh, Mount Gol Gol uh, Golgotha. Golgotha. Okay. The three crosses, crosses on the mountain. Empty. Or put somebody on it. Doesn't make any difference. You got two thieves here. And then you got here, you got the Son of Man. So the two thieves, this is a metaphor now. And this is why, you know, metaphors liberate you from the um, concrete. Religious images are um, embedded in. So let me, look, uh, maybe I'm digressing here. But to liberate this Mount Golgotha from the concrete of the story, which is, oh, well, it's just about history. It's just about that Christianity. No, well, if you lift, it, if you lift the metaphor out, it's about you. You see, so this, uh, the three, the Son of Man now, it's not Jesus, the Son of Man is a metaphor for your revelation. The Son of Man is a revelation for your toll booth revelation. Oh, I see. I see what I didn't see before. So Jesus says on the cross, forgive them, they don't understand what they're doing. So when you have the toll booth revelation, you understand what you've been doing because you see what you've been blind. You see that you've been blind and just to react to a reaction to pain. It doesn't matter who caused it. It does matter that you can't see it. So when you can see it in action, right there, oh, I see it. I see you. I see you. You've been governed. You've been pulling my strings all of my life. <clears throat> You've been the puppet master. The pain has been the puppet master. I see you. I will not build this house again. I will not build this house of pain again because I see you. And when you see the house builder of the pain, you're not the house builder. The house builder of your pain, of your conditioning, you see, is just a pattern that has been perpetuated in your life, reenacting like a Civil War reenactment, but are reenacting the pain in different situations. So you don't recognize it. Oh, you think this is a new, this is something new. No, it's yesterday's pain just being reenacted today. We don't see it. So we buy into it, react, and then, oh, why did that happen? I just, I'm trying to do better, but, eh, you know, so. <laughs> I won't do it again, but you do. You see, because you haven't seen the house builder. You haven't seen the house of pain. And it takes a while to go into the house of pain because you've got many floors. It takes a while to work your way down to the basement. It's kind of like in the movie Inception. You have to go down through the layers of the dream. And you go down and down and down and you find the, the buried assumption out of which has grown this tree of praying. The roots go way down there, you see. And what is the assumption? The assumption that grows this tree of pain in our country and in our lives. It's the assumption that the world is hostile. It's the assumption that the world is hostile to me. Therefore, I have to control it. I have to conquer it. I have to beat it down. I have to resist. And in my resistance, I feel powerful. I feel somebody, you see. I feel my anger, my outrage, my resistance. Oh, and so our culture supports that. But it's all based on the assumption that the world is hostile. And it's also based on the assumption that the world is external to me. It's the assumption that I'm just a thing in a world of things being batted around you know, like a ping pong ball between the two thieves. A ping pong ball between the two thieves. You see. 
So the Son of Man then is the Eureka moment, is the oh, I see. And then translating the uh, Christian story, that seeing is the resurrection. That seeing <coughs> is your resurrection from the cross of your conditioning. So it's not something distant and abstraction and in the future and all embellished with this religious stuff. It's all very simple. It all comes down to the toll booth, an everyday place where in that everyday place, great revelations can happen. Thanks for dropping in.